So here you're seeing is an image of both the joints at the two ends of the clavicle. Medially, you have this joint called sternoclavicular joint. The sternoclavicular joint is what variety of joint? This is a saddle variety of synovial joint, as well as it's a complex joint. And because of the presence of this intraarticular disc, this joint space has been divided into two compartments. Here you're seeing is this compartment. This is the medial and superior. You can say supromedial compartment, right? Towards the manubrium. And in this compartment, the movement that is permissible is protraction and retraction means the clavicle can glide in forward and backward direction in the supromedial compartment then there is this compartment here which is towards the clavicular end this is infrolateral compartment so in this infrolateral compartment the movement that occurs is elevation and depression and rotation so that means you can move the clavicle upwards and downwards over to the manubrium in this compartment and apart from elevation and depression there is also a twisting movement possible here like when you were doing bowling in a cricket that means circumduction movements at shoulder joint so there is also a slight rotatory movements possible remember that this is a saddle joint so not only the movements happening in the two directions vertical axis and transverse axis apart from that there are rotatory movements also permissible that's along the longitudinal axis now this rotatory movements the clavicle are also happening here in this infrolateral compartment. So remember this, supramedial compartment, protraction and retraction, infrolateral compartment, elevation, depression and rotation. How to remember this? Have you heard of that pump handle movement of the sternum for increasing the AP diameter of the thorax, which involves the upper two to six ribs? So because it's towards the sternal end, so remember protraction and retraction will happen in a compartment which is towards the sternum. And have you heard of elevating and depressing the shoulder joint? So remember elevation and depression will happen in a compartment which is on the lateral side. Forward movement and backwards, that's protraction and retraction will happen in a medial compartment. This way, I believe you can remember. And furthermore, if you abduct your arm at an angle of around 90 degrees, along the longitudinal axis of the clavicle and then you start twisting your upper limb. So that's the rotatory movement happening and which provides adjunct rotation at the middle end of the clavicle. So this also you are doing with the help of bones lateral to the clavicle. So that's why remember rotatory movements will also happen in the lateral compartment. Okay.